it's tail wagon tuesday here's coco and uh, coco hopefully you get outside today and get to go to the dog park because it'll probably be the only good day for any outdoor activities maybe tomorrow you might be able to get some uh park time in but it will be very windy tomorrow uh three o'clock we're 48 five o'clock we're uh, in the low 50s pretty much area wide so not one of the better days to get to the park but hey uh if you can get out there you get out there right so uh here's the uh, tornadoes we saw sunday night the first one was in westchester uh ohio this was three miles east northeast of beckett ridge that's where it started and then two miles to the west of Morrow, it was on the ground for about 200 uh, or 11 miles. This was e EF085, and then the next one was an 84 mile an hour wind tornado, and that was three miles south southwest of Corwin. Which, if you don't know where that's at, that's in Warren County. That's where it started and then ended two miles south southeast of Corwin. You get the picture here. They were on the ground for a short period of time and they were weaker tornadoes. You can see this one was on the ground for 6.89 miles and uh, it produced 80 mile an hour winds. So I'll, I'll see if we get any more reports from them, if they go out and do any more survey damage. Uh, and if, they're, if they do, uh, I'll let you know about those. Uh, I don't know. There was some damage near the Napoleon area, I'm for sure of. Uh, I don't know if that was just straight line wind damage, but we'll uh, let you know here. So here is the Storm Prediction Center forecast as we go into uh, tomorrow evening. This is an enhanced risk of severe. This is all mode severe, but I would say damaging wind is the number one threat followed by the potential for tornadoes. Matter of fact, the Storm Prediction Center has put the entire tri-state in the significant tornado threat as we head into tomorrow evening a little bit different than what we saw sunday where we had that risk towards madison southeastern indiana uh, and down to the south now there's a little bit of things that kind of uh i'll explain in just a few minutes that are a little bit different than the previous system um we and i'll get into that in just a minute i do want to continue though because we do have other risks of severe this is for thursday mainly along and south of the ohio river this is going to be a uh, damaging wind large hail potential for tornado two and then we have another severe weather risk on friday uh damaging winds large hail maybe an isolated tornado all threats there for friday and then there's also a risk for severe in our far southern county harrison county but that could be lifted back up north this is for saturday not friday so a lot going on there in the uh, severe weather department here over the next several days and then on top of that there's a flood watch that's in effect this goes through sunday morning for significant flooding potential uh and when i mean significant a lot and we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes uh, temperatures outside right now, we're in the low 40s to the north, and then we're in the uh, mid and upper 30s elsewhere this morning, and clouds are starting to clear out. So here's Future Radar. I want to show you. It shows that instability to, uh, building during the day, but then you notice as we get towards Thursday, or late, late Wednesday night into Thursday morning, this is the HRRR model, it shows those, uh, those uh, fuel values starting to cut off. And that is likely the scenario that's going to occur at some point during the evening overnight period on Thursday. The line of severe storms looks like there's going to be two here. Potentially one to our south and one to our north, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. Here's the NAM uh, uh, high-res model. You can see a lot of fuel during the day, but the same thing here. A little bit more fuel towards the overnight period on this particular model and then clearing it out as we go towards the morning. And I think this model here might be a little too late on the storms approaching. Um, it may have to adjust the timing on that just a little bit. But uh, let me show you these on uh, full screen here. It shows the, uh, some showers in the morning, maybe a rumble of thunder. I don't know if I'm sold on that. This is the HRRR. This is 6 o'clock in the evening, and it shows... A storm developing out in front of this line and then you see multiple storms that try to develop out in front of that line that's worst case scenario folks that would be the potential for some um, storms that could rotate and then you notice as we go to one it shows a line to our south and then it shows a line to our north uh, kind of messy there similar situation to what we saw uh, as we went into sunday night still a lot of things to be worked out here but it does have that timing of storms 
and uh, as we go into the evening, and then that line of severe storms as we go past midnight. And then this is the uh, NAM uh, three kilometer, which is, w which is fancy for saying high resolution NAM model. And you'll see it'll bring in those shower chances in the morning. It's not a big deal, but it's there. And then we'll watch those uh, shower. Uh, there could be a rumble of thunder there too. But uh, as we go into the afternoon, we'll see uh, very windy conditions. And then you notice same thing here, 10, 11 o'clock, a little bit later though, showing those storms uh, that are out in front of the main line. If that occurs, like I said, some of those storms could rotate. And then we watch the main line that comes through after midnight. This one has it going about three hours later. Uh, and then you can see that line dying as it moves off. And then this is what brings in our flooding threat is that line stalls out and moves back up to the north. And then we saw, then we see more storms that uh, potentially uh, uh, move in for your afternoon. So that is uh, the, it's going to be a very busy, busy, busy period starting Wednesday evening uh, all the way through Saturday uh, with, with storms, heavy rainfall, flash flooding. Flash flooding is, I, I would say, by far my number one concern once we get past Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Some of the data shows over a foot of rain between tomorrow evening all the way through Saturday evening. Uh, you know, our our area will not handle that much water very, very well. We're we'll likely to see uh, some very, very significant flooding. So if you live in low-lying areas along creeks and streams, you're in for it. You're in for a pretty big event here. Uh, and then the Ohio River, to put in perspective, I think it was a little bit more than this, but the 1997 flood, uh, there was very similar uh, amounts of water that fell from the sky uh, in this situation. So stay tuned. I think we're going to see quite a bit of river flooding, and I do think we're going to see some flash flooding, especially as we get into uh, Thursday and Friday. I think we're going to see a good bet for some flash flooding around here too. So do not drive your vehicle through flooded water ever, ever. It's actually one of the top number one killer uh, uh, in the United States. So tomorrow evening, Winds are my primary threat, followed by flooding and tornadoes. Um, I, I think hail is the last concern. Um, I, I want you to right now, and I know I showed you the significant tornado map. There's a lot of things. Fuel is going to be the number one thing. If those storms fire earlier in the evening and they get going, they will have that possibility to rotate. I know that a lot of you guys have seen that one model run from the HRR uh, yesterday evening that showed mass supercells over our area. I want to caution you and just say that model runs several times a day, the longer range model. The short term model runs every hour. And if I was to sit here and post every model every hour, you would think something different every time. So I, I don't want to confuse you, and I want to make sure that you have the most information. Right now, what I want you to understand is there's going to be a, a, a potential for some storms to fire out ahead of that line being anywhere between, let's say, 6 and maybe 10 o'clock. And then after 10 o'clock through the early morning hours is when we'll see that potential for the line to move through of severe storms. I still want to kind of just give a, a big area for that because I still think the models are still trying to adjust uh, and get the timing exactly right. So stay tuned to, to this evening's update for more on the timing of the line of those storms. And then behind this, significant cold moves in. Uh, looking at temperatures in the 40s for highs, freezing uh, uh, overnight lows, uh, very, very cold. But I will say it will be drier than normal along that extended. So uh, this is beyond the uh, seven day forecast, the eight to 14 day outlook. So we'll need some of this dry time to kind of uh, work out what we went through. So you can see we'll get into the low 50s for highs. The clouds will clear out if they're not already in your area. You'll see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I put red. And that is because there's severe weather potential Wednesday into Thursday. There is severe weather potential Friday and Saturday too, but it's not as much. But I want you to be aware of the, the flooding potential and severe weather threats combined brings me the concern for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, I think, is a concern too. 
we'll, I'll fine tune that one, get a little bit closer to it. But you'll see those temperatures uh, staying in the 60s through the, 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 the thunderstorms and the rain, and then we drop significantly next Monday, a high of 47 which our average for this time of year now is around 60 degrees. I need you guys right now, if you don't have it, download the Weather Pulse app. It's $2.99. It's a one-time payment. You get no advertisement, and it'll keep you ahead of these storms here uh, as we get into uh, tomorrow evening. So stay tuned here. I'll keep you updated through this whole entire severe weather event and flash flooding event that's about to occur here across the tri-state.